Well, hello. Uh, you may have arrived at this site by accident or because I put an, a, a name on the uh, video title, which is something you actually want to learn about. In either case, welcome to our site. Uh, we're a concrete house building in the Philippines, but uh, we deal with uh, anything house construction, including the wind turbine on the roof and the uh, whole house fan. I've got a, a seven meter diameter fan for the uh, atrium. And today we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, how you come up with a cross section for your blades. Of uh, it's, it's, uh, It doesn't have to be a flat piece of plywood. That's not really very efficient. It's only like seven like percent. Uh, and we can do much better. We're looking here at uh, a site called Airfoil Tools. It's a database site. And uh, we'll show you how we selected uh, an airfoil from Airfoil Tools, and then what we do with it, how we change it into what we want it to be. So, the one we're interested in is this uh, uh, Joukowsky, uh 12%. And that, what that means is the height, total the, at the highest point, is 12% of the length. This straight line on the bottom here, from the most forward point to the most aft point, that's called chord, C-H-O-R-D. That is the angle, uh, we're, or the line we're concerned with when we know how, how much uh, this is tilted up, angle of attack, you know, it, it determines uh, how much lift it makes, up to it gets to the point where it goes turbulent. The turbulence is back here, and when a turbulence hits there, it doesn't fly anymore. Of interest to you in, in uh, wind turbines is 19% of this line to 31%. That's where you want to operate. Uh, the, uh, the lift of the airfoil was perpendicular to the surface. So you'll notice if you're down here at this 19% point, uh, that vector is pointing out here somewhere. And uh, it's, uh, it's making lift. You know, the, the biggest part of that, if you, if you resolve that into a, a triangle, you know, uh, with a hypotenuse is vertical, uh, the lift is much higher than the uh, the other one, but the other one is trying to drag the airfoil forward at, at those uh, uh, higher angles of attack up here near the front. And if you do that in the back, when you get to the 31 percent, then you, you you're getting a lot of drag. You're getting lift, but you're getting a lot of drag. Okay, now we're we're going to select an airfoil. You see that these are uh, both by the same uh, series of airfoils. This is a symmetrical airfoil. Uh, it's only 9% uh, thickness. Um, this is useful for if you have contemplated using a completely flat blade. This is better because it has the minimum drag, mi minimum resistance turning through the air of an airfoil. This is a mathematically calculated curve. It's not just something uh, that looks good to me that somebody drew on a piece of paper. Uh, you put in the, the thickness and the length and a few other things, and it calculates this symmetrical airfoil. This that we're looking at here was a symmetrical airfoil. It was a 12%. Um, it was this one. Oh, it's off the screen. I moved that. I can move it the other way. Uh. That's, that symmetrical airfoil was changed into the one down below. Um, okay, so what we're looking for is a is this mathematical shape on the front, uh, something with an aggressive. Uh, uh, this, the, the, uh, you see this gold-looking line through here? Uh, they call that camber line. From the cord line up, whatever amount this is. That's how much they raised this. It's off the screen. If, it, if this was the one it came from, that's how much they would raise the top line, and it would also raise the bottom line by that same amount. That's why you can see that this one here, at some point, it's raised the entire bottom up above into a, a more lift generating shape, a much higher lift. Now, while we're looking at this, 
is because at some point it goes straight. The camber line from around in here, if you look, the top and bottom are the same, but we can, we can reconfigure this back back here to do what we want it to do. If we were doing, uh, um, I'm wanting to make lift with a, um, like a horizontal axis wind turbine, we would probably curve this down. If we want to make a fan blade, we're going to curve it up because we want, see the fan blade, you're putting energy in, but your goal is moving air. And with the, uh, the turbine blade, your goal is to take air and take the energy out of it to make lift. So uh, you, it's sort of a, working across purpose to each other. Um, once you have a, a, a picture that's got the kind of camber you want, let's go to uh, a little farther down here. This is that thing, the same airflow drawn bigger and, and off the screen, of course. But what we're looking for is the charts down at the bottom. This is the angle the airflow is tilted up. This is they call it alpha. Uh, just just a name doesn't mean anything. Um, you have zero lift. Uh, well, over here, at, at minus 15 degrees, that thing doesn't make any lift at all. Um, and anything tilted up, uh, uh, you know, it, it keeps, it makes lift, to, it gets to actually being an airfoil here, and then it really starts to make lift. And up here is where it tops out, it starts to stall. That's off your page, uh, that's all right. We're gonna mount this thing at two and a half degrees down. So I go to two and a half degrees, and I see where these uh, uh, these lines cross. That's a coefficient lift of 0.5. That would fly a, light, a small airplane. We're, we're trying for about 1.75 on, on takeoff, but <laughs> that, that's got enough lift it would actually do something. Uh, but it's got way too much lift for what we're doing. We're not trying to... Uh, uh, we're going to do an example for... Uh, our fan blade because it's already drawn up but the procedure is exactly the same we'll take a look at a different one uh, this is a horseman and you'll see it's not uh, got as big of a camber line but it is fairly straight next, next to the back so this is the candidate uh, and it's uh, uh, lift versus angle of attack at minus two and a half. It gives, depends on, th th these lines here are uh, <clears throat> uh, Reynolds numbers. You don't need to know what that is, just that uh, higher Re Reynolds numbers are more efficient. Anyway, from a rotten uh, uh, Reynolds number uh, at two and a half, you're still getting uh, about a .06 or seven. And I'm looking for about a .1. Uh, so, uh, this, this is in the ballpark. This is a, a good candidate. Uh, and then we're going to look at the one we actually chose for the example and one we're actually building. This is uh, by Epler. It's a uh, 266. Uh, if we, we, we can look at the uh, lift versus the drag. At minus two and a half, Minus two and a half over here. You see, I'm up here around uh, 0.2, and I want 0.25, so uh, I'm 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 in a better position on the uh, on what's going on. Okay, so once you uh, um, you've picked your uh, an airfoil out of the 15,000 that are on this site, six, no, it's now six. No, it's not that much. It's 1,636 1, different ones. Uh, you ask for the coordinates, and it's going to give them to you in numbers in a list. First number is how far back from the front of the thing it is, and the second number is how far up it is. So that's all we need to know about uh, the airfoil plotter.
Uh, we knew, our, our goal is to get the numbers on this list, uh, and you're going to have to copy them off with uh, splitting your screen on, and, uh, on whatever kind of a drawing, like if you're using SketchUp or whatever. You grab the title bar and drag it till all of a sudden it jumps into a half screen, and you have previously opened another tab that has those numbers on it. That way you can copy one to the other right across. Uh, our list of numbers here on the right. There's the entire list. Um, what I do, I come down four numbers and I put a line across. That's what these were. Well, I just moved this out of the way when I got done. Didn't move the line, so they're doing absolutely nothing. But that way you can you can keep it separated. The other thing you can do is you can just take your your list into well, blocks of maybe six, seven uh, things. And, and, and make them into a group, this uh, command you have on a drawing program. And then you can just move them up above the line so that uh, every time you do one, it's up above the line. You, you don't get lost on the list. But you're going to plot back from this line, this line in the front, how far back, and then you're going to plot up from that line. And you get the... Uh, an intersection. I've, I've erased all the, uh, the superfluous lines and I just left the intersection. And so I could find the intersection. Uh, I just took a circle any size that, that doesn't look sloppy and the center of the circle to the center of the intersection. And then when I, when I want to make this curve through all these things, I select circles for my points and it won't look at anything else. And it goes really quick and it doesn't screw up. Anyway, once you've uh, uh, got this shape. Uh, if you if you're any kind of good with the internet, you can find a, a an airfoil shape uh, off of that uh, airfoil tool site and just copy the picture. That's all we really need. But uh, I'm one of them people that's overly precise. Okay. So here's our thing with the. Uh, all the grid lines taken off and and this just came with it so what I did then was I uh, uh, I, I, I trimmed all these lines off and from the middle of each line I made a curve and that's my uh, camber line I wanted to check that that where I can start changing this airfoil without any effect on the airfoil uh, on the drag properties which is what I'm using it for also, I picked this thickness so when I build it, uh, it won't be too flexible. You know, it won't bow into the wind. Uh, so we get a camber line. I found out where I can start changing it. And I, I do a, 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 an arc down here uh, where, the, where the curvature of the arc matched that, that part that was a, a pretty smooth curve. And it went up. And then I just took it and copied it and moved it around on the screen to where it got tangent over here and where it crossed here I cut them off and I cut them off over here and that's my shape uh, the, the airfoil and this is the two and this is level the purple line here oh I got it off the screen we can't see it <laughs> same thing I just said it, it, the curve matches up uh, to the curve on the uh, about 50 to 80 percent of the thing just get a circle that fetches that, and then at some point you pick it up and towards tangent with the top. Okay, this line here is level in, in the drawing program. The black line is the core of the airfoil. It's tilted two and a half degrees down. If I put it level, uh, I would disturb the air more, and uh, I would make a lot more lift. Uh, and if your goal is lift, then you, you, you tilt it into a positive above the, the black line would be pointed up rather than down. But I chose the two and a half because I knew about every airfoil that uh, you ever looked at uh, makes lift at a negative lift if it's cambered. If it's symmetrical, it won't make any lift below zero. It all starts at zero. Okay, let's uh, see what we did next. Okay, I thought this was looking... See, I'm going to have an airfoil this this wide. Really skinny in the back. And I got worried about... Because uh, I got a really large diameter. It just not, might not have enough height to it. 
So uh, I multiplied the height first by one. Oh, I was. <laughs> I got worried that this, this height wasn't enough when I built it to be stiff enough. So I multiplied the, uh, the uh, I scaled it, but I scaled it only in the, uh, the up and down direction by 1.25. Made it thicker, but everything is in, in proportion, it's just thicker. And also this thin, thin part back here got thicker, you know, which is uh, another goal. And then I did a 1.5, and I'm kind of thinking this is, this is plenty thick enough to, to be strong. Um, I'm doing uh, styrofoam with uh, fiberglass covering on it. Well, I'm not. I can't. I'm not allowed to work in the Philippines. My crew is going to do it. They're going to learn fiberglass the hard way. They'll be sticky up to their elbows in it. And uh, oh, that was the the one and a half. That's the one I think we chose to use. And just to uh, to see what happens, I went to one seven five and and. Uh, To 175 and then to two and those just looking too fat it might it might be uh, aerodynamically clean up here but it's still a bigger cross-section going through the air and I'm more interested in the uh, in redirecting the air as a fan blade if I was making wind turbine uh, blades to capture energy I'd have curved that down rather than up because I'm trying the one one time I'm trying to put energy in to the wind and 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 force it to move the wind and the other I'm trying to uh, collect energy out of the wind so it's, it's basically make leaf there's two different uh, uh, things this is our fan blade uh, it's, it's full scale in the computer of course uh, I don't know it's uh, this cross section is that cross section and I wish I had some way to see what you see when you want them pointing. The cross section of this blades is this one and a half cross section. <clears throat> oh, another thing about um, um, we'll take a little closer look at that thing. This line here, that's the center of the axle of your uh, turbine or your fan blade. This is at 19%. That's about, uh, wow. Well. No, this is, a 20, this is 25% of the actual oil, airflow cord. <clears throat> this 25% is uh, a place that's not trying to rotate this blade clockwise or counterclockwise. It's making the uh, changes on the airflow, but it's not trying to twist the airflow. That's just a common point in aerodynamics. Uh, 25% of cord. That's, that's my rotation axis I want to keep with. So, uh, this air, and, and you'll notice that that is, uh, if I, if I make it perpendicular to that surface out here, I got a little forward component, which is uh, reducing the uh, uh, amount of uh, horsepower it takes to turn this thing through the air. It's just free energy. If there really is free energy, if you know where to look. Um, but because this uh, blade is at 25%, the one opposite, because uh, this is the leading edge, obviously because it's 25 back if that was turned around to the other side that would be the 25 percent so these blades aren't across from each other they're 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 across from each other aerodynamically but they're not across from each other physically that's as clear as that's going to get we're not going to go over that anymore so then we need uh oh this is uh uh, my wind turbine, uh, which shouldn't be on this drawing. <laughs>